Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 169, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. Not last Friday, but this Friday. Uh, we're your hosts. I'm Anton. And I'm Marwa. Hi, Anton. Hi, Marwa. How are you today? Great. Thank you. Great. So today we're going to uh, harken back to a couple of tips that we've done in the past. Um, and we're going to try to make some of those tips actually easier. Uh, so. Um, People may remember I, I put a blog post out um, about, oh, I know, quite a while ago about writing fast queries. Um, do you remember that blog post, Marwa? Yes, it's very yeah. interesting and it helped right. me a lot. Yeah, I gave a bunch of tips. Do you remember tip number nine, just off the top of your head? Uh, it's avoiding writing um, one query when you could write more than one, actually. Yes, yes. So um, very good memory. I'm, I'm sure you've got this blog post memorized uh, at this point. Um, but that's it exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll show it and, uh, and walk through why, Marwa. Tell me why you shouldn't just write one, um, one uh, what do you call it, uh, one query when it really should be more than one. What's this all about? OK, have you shared my screen? Your I've screen? shared my screen, yes. Yep. Okay, so this is a tricky tip. I'm not sure about exactly the explanation of it, but sometimes we write one query, but when we not split it, replace it with more than one query, it's better and it's more efficient. That's right, that's the right. Yeah, that I have of it. Yeah, and the, the main reason is this. Um, when you have a, a table, and the table has multiple indexes on it, the database is only going to use one of those indexes at, on that, that particular table. At that point in the explain plan, it's only going to use one index. And so if you have more than one index column in the same table, or depending on, you know, as, as things get more and more complicated, um, the, the database has to decide, does it use this index or does it use this index? And what it's going to do is the first time it looks at your query, it's going to make that decision and it's going to base it on your bind variables. And so if in this case, if bind variable two is not null, it may choose to use this columns index. But later when this is null, it's gonna to continue to use this index even though it's not the best choice, right? In this particular query, it does two very different things whether or not this bind variable is null. If it's null, it should not use this index. It should use this index. But if it's not null, maybe it should use this one. If you write one query like this, if this is just your one query, the database is going to make a decision and it's gonna stick with that decision. But if you split it into multiple queries um, or you do some other techniques, you can get the database to use uh, um, both indexes. In this particular case, for example, it would do two uh, it would store two plans, one for, for this one, um, and it would choose which column, and the other one uh, is the, the union all, where this is null, it would choose this column. So, but that's still a fair amount of work. What you really want is you want for when, when this P2 blah is not null, you want it to use this query, but when it is null, you want it to use this query, because this portion, this right here, this is meaningless when, well, I'm sorry, this is meaningless when it's null, right? When that's null, it doesn't do anything. This is useless, right? Um, and I've seen that in many places. Right, right. And so we, we've done a tip about this before. And so I haven't started my clock yet because we're just talking about a tip we did before. But here it is. I'm going to go to um, you, we see this all the time. This is the bad way. You don't want to do this. Um, we've got three bind variables, P5 depno, P5 ename, and P5 depno check, checkbox. It's one query. It's always going to use the same explain plan, to, regardless of what the best thing is. Um, and so um, it looks like this. This is my screen. If I type in king, I'm only going to get king. If I, type, if I choose dep, I'm going to get, and it gives me the right results but it's not gonna give me the best performance. So 
in our previous tip, and I'm going to and turn the clock on. We're, we're really cheating badly at this point. Um, so in our previous tip, I suggested we do something like this. Um, this approach right here, where you say, you put this case statement in and you say case when P5 depth no is not null, or it, then you add this on to the query. When this is, you add this on in each case. So in this case, we're doing equivalence. In this case, we're doing an in string. And in the case of a checkbox, we're doing an in. So we've got um, in string, we've got equals, and we've got in here, right? And this works great. There's nothing wrong with this at all. It, this is a super way to do it. Um, but do you know, can you think of anything that's, that's not ideal about this, Marwa? It's, you have to remember exactly the syntax and with the concatenation and replacing the bent variable names in the right spot. And if you, um, for example, uh, inside the quoted uh, line 16, in, instead of instear, there is an extra letter, for example. Yeah, it won't like I do be... this all the time. In <laughs> yeah. string. Like, in right? string. Right? It's going to parse. Oh. Yes. Right. It, so, yeah. So I think those are the two major problems with this approach for me is it, it's it, 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 it's hard to remember how to do it. And it is uh, and it won't it doesn't part. It doesn't check your parsing the way you want it to. Right. OK. So what I did and, and the, the problem is I see I continue to see people doing um, doing it this bad way because this is kind of hard to do, right? Yes. So wouldn't it be great if we could just say, okay, here's my base query. That's, that's the, the basic query. And I'm just gonna say my E name is associated with my, that bind variable. My depth no is associated with that bind variable. And then as it turns out, that same depth no is associated with this bind variable as well. And then tell it what to do. I wanna do an in string, I want to do an equals and I want to do an in, right? So those wow. are the three things I want to do. And then I don't have to remember, remember the syntax. I just have to pass in the column aliases that I'm talking about, e name, depno, depno, the bind, the page items, p5 name, p5 depno, p5 depno checkbox. And what do I want to do? I want to do an in string. I want to do an equals. I want to do an in. Boom. Boom. So, boom. So if I do this with this little query, um, it works if I have, uh, if I mistype this, it's gonna tell me that E name four is an invalid identifier. Oh, uh, yes. So if I put in something that shouldn't be here, if it's something that's not allowed, it will tell me, you know, the pcomp method must be one of those things. So yes. it, it, it parses, it does everything that we want. Validations. We'll say, validations, right, all of that. So, Let's take a look at it. We'll say okay to that, save it. We'll run this. And it these three queries behave exactly the same way. If I do accounting and search, I only get accounting. If I say king, I only get king. If I say, okay, all of them, let's do this, but I want um, sales and research, I'll get sales and research. Oh, well, I will. And, and, <laughs> I apparently didn't do a great job in the other ones. Oh yes, I uh, I actually made them. I, I this is a perfect example of why these other two I made a mistake. This should have I did this uh, aplex string that split. I need a comma and uh, uh, that I need that right there, and I I forgot to do that. But because it didn't parse, right? This is a perfect. Yes, <laughs> it didn't parse it. Um, That's and funny. here it even here it didn't work. Um, so, right. So I think that's what I need. Right. Um, so now let's run it and it will, it will give us the right values now. So they should all behave correctly. Um, there we go. So now they're all Great. giving me just sales and research or just, just sales. If I do that, um, how, how crazy is that? Sales always has so many more people in it than research. I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> um, oh, so I guess the people are wondering what's this function? <laughs> so here we have it. Let's take a quick look at the function. The function is only 40 lines long. Um, it's my get query function, B, P base query, P column aliases, et cetera. Um, and uh, there we go. Um, 
Uh, so you're building up right. the query. And I build the query right here. And I'm, I've published a blog post. It actually published while we were talking, I think, that has this in it. Um, I actually added this extra line. I'll go back in and update the blog post to give you the in capability for a checkbox or a select list, something like that. Um, but it's just that easy. You pass in your base query, your column aliases, your page items, and the, the computation met method for each one. And there you go. Um, so uh, I think that's it. Let's take a look. Uh, what actually, is the where uh, I think. Ah, Plamen's got a great question. The way I wrote it, Plamen, it will not work because I am wrappering it. So you're, you're, um, you, you need to select those columns out. You can hide them or you can modify my approach. But Plamen, to answer your question, I do require um, in this, this approach, I'm requiring that the columns that show here, these have to be, uh, these columns have to be match up with the, the bind variables that you're passing in. Um, so, um, yes, original, that's exactly right. The, the default isn't, no, it's not. It's actually a, a return character is the default of apex string that split, which I, I did correctly in my, uh, in my, uh, right here, but I didn't do it correctly when I went and, and added it to the the old ways of doing it. Um, so, so here. And we yes, and isn't Apex behaving almost similar to this way when uh, building up queries? When we yeah. take to, take a look at the debug messages. Right. So we've done our tip. Way. We've done our tip, but I think that's a great, great point, Marwa. Um, let's take a look at it. So you're what you're saying is. If I come and I look at a fasted search, right? How does Apex deal with a fasted search? Well, this is a fasted search. This isn't my page, right? But if I trace this page and I take a look at the output, you'll see Apex does the same thing. Apex, this is all the, this is what Apex ultimately does. Apex wrappers the, your query, whatever you put in for your query, and then it adds to the where clause. Um, so right here, you can see it's, it's adding Oh, I can't remember where it is in this particular one, but it's building this up in the same method. Um, and so what we do, if we take a look at, at, the, one, at the ones we're running, um, our reports, uh, and I can't remember, let's, I, could, I think it's this one, um, we'll see that, that we are writing ours uh, as well. We're, we're building up our query in the same fashion that Apex is doing it. If you take a look at the, the debug output, um, so, Marwa, that, that I think is a huge point, is the, the closer we can write our code to the way the Apex team writes their code, the better results we're going to get. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So, um, okay, well, with this little get query, um, with this little get query, I think folks, hopefully folks will stop, uh, stop doing it this bad way. Uh, and it will be easy for folks to do it um, sort of the Apex way, I'll call it, the Apex Builder way. Um, so let's take, take a quick look and see if the blog post published. Ah, there it is. So here's your blog post. And you'll see the same kinds of things here. Um, and here's this query. Here's this right here. I will go in and I'll add in the one other little piece that I added right before um, to the case statement to get the Apex split stuff in there um and then folks can can enhance this however they like but it's it's a starting point that gives you equals in string and there's also a like compare uh like in there if you want to do like it will um i i can't get this to scroll i don't know why there we go um it will do a like with percents around it that kind of thing um so um there we go i don't have Thank any you. uh any wisdom of the week or anything this week to you? No, I don't, but well, I'm going wisdom, to use your wisdom, this. <clears throat> your wisdom was good. You did have that. Your wisdom was that Apex is doing this way, doing it this way as well with interactive grids, interactive reports, fasted searches. So that, I want to call that our wisdom of the week. Okay, great. <laughs> I like it also. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that is all for today. Uh, do all the things you're supposed to do uh like subscribe tell your friends about the show 
All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.